Hi, Greg Ellis from the Illawarra Mercury here for the people of Wollongong and today we're talking to Marty Haynes, OAN. This segment is brought to you by Access Law Group and the Illawarra Mercury. Marty, thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Greg. I want to go right back to the beginning to start off with and get a little bit of the background of Marty Haynes. Where did you grow up? I uh, grew up in uh, Dundas, which is just near Parramatta. Uh, went to a little Catholic school called St Bernadette's at Dundas Valley and then went on to Maris Brothers. But I only went to year 10. Yeah, I left school and I, I, I remember my mum taking me to the cricket at the SCG and a friend of my brother's was a cameraman for Channel 9. And I went up to him and started talking to him. He said, oh, do you want to have a go? So during a break of play, so that's what I did. I had to go at the camera and when I walked back to the chair with Mama, I said, oh, that's what I want to do. I think I want to become a cameraman. And you worked on some of the iconic shows like Midday and Hey Hey It's Saturday and it, some it, of those? It's yeah. really funny, Greg. It's a, I'm a big believer of, like, you have a bit of a vision board, have a bit of what you want and put it in, into your mind. And I used to come home at, from school at lunchtime because I only lived not far from the school. So at lunchtime, I'd ride my bike home and have lunch. And I used to watch, watch the Mike Walsh show. And I always thought to myself, I'd love to work on that show. Well, the first day at Channel 9, I was positioned to work on the Mike Walsh show. You know, eventually I became a cameraman and I worked on part of that in the midday show and worked on 60 Minutes and A Current Affair and a lot of Wild World of Sport. Uh, you know, I toured uh, Australia with the cricket for many, many years uh, and, and, and loved it. Anything to do with sport I, I shot, so it was, it was great. And you had some great mentors during that time. I know another conversation I've had with you before was um, Graham Kennedy and the connection you had with him. Yeah, I, yeah. I, he was a real father figure to some of the... Even though he's such a private and recluse uh, person, I, I worked on... Um, well, Kenny Sutcliffe had been chosen to work with Graham on Coast to Coast back in 1988. And he, uh, Graham had said to Kenny, pick your five best cameramen. So five of us got chosen to work on that particular show. But after about nine months, I was starting to miss out on a bit of OT and travelling and all that sort of stuff. And I went to the management of, of the production manager of Channel 9 and said, listen, can I get a little bit more money? I'm actually losing money working on this show. Mm. He is great to work for. And watching Kennedy was absolutely outstanding. And they said no. And I thought, well, the only way I'm going to make more money is I'll have to leave and go and actually work freelance. So... I put my resignation in and I said to Kenny that day, I said, oh, I've resigned, I've finished in four weeks. So I always shot Graham's, Graham, I was his cameraman. And when the show opened up, he asked Ken, how are you? And Ken said, oh, I'm in a bad mood tonight because Marty's resigned. And to me, live television, I'm thinking, mm. uh-oh, oh, I've been set up here. And then they put the camera on me and Graham, jokingly, said, what do you want, more money, a new car? And I'm thinking... All right, I've been stitched here. Mm. And afterwards, I got told by the floor manager to walk around and see Graham. And not many people went into Graham's dressing room. So I went around, he goes, what's the problem? And I said, well, it's all right for you, Graham. It's great to be an honour of working on the show, but I'm actually losing money. So I'm going to go and do freelance. And so he approached me, because he had owned a company with uh, Peter Feynman, the man behind Crocodile Dundee. And he, uh, it was, uh, he said, would you come and work for me and work on the show full time? So... I said, yeah, I'd do it. So um, it was really weird because Harry and Miller had got in contact with us because he was his manager at the time mm. and said, um, oh, Graham would like you to go to Hamilton Island because he was he took, I, I'd resigned on the Friday and Graham was going up on the Saturday. And I said, oh, well, I, I, I can't fly to Hamilton Island. I'm just about to go work for myself. And he goes, don't worry, you'll be flown up there. So I was flown up there in a Learjet on my own and I just thought, this is a kid from Housing Commission Dundas going like this, living like this. I flew up there. Graham was sitting on... Keith Williams, who used to own Hamilton Island, was sitting on his big private yacht and said, you can, I want you to work for me. There's the contract. Sign it. And, and that was... I did. I signed it and worked for him for the next 18 months, nearly two years, and had a ball. I learnt so much, not just about television, because uh, he was the king of TV. He was so powerful. He just... I would learn script editing with him, um, I, and even though the camera work was always there, and I knew that back to front. But I learned a lot about life. It was mm. uh, I, I had a bit of a fallout with my dad there for a, a while, and he made sure that I went back and and you know smoothed that over, which I did. And dad and I had a, a stronger relationship from that day on. 
But um, I, I owe a lot to, to Graham. Um, I used to, when I started working in Canberra, Graham lived mm. at Canyon Lee. I was going to ask you about that. And yes. uh, up there in the Southern Highlands. And occasionally when I drove home, because my, my wife, she was my fiance at that stage, lived in Sydney. So I would commute on, a, on Fridays and Sunday nights, go down and back. And uh, I would call in and see Graham and have a cup of coffee mm. and a laugh. And that was in his final years. Yeah, so, it was yeah. in his final years, yeah. yeah. And um, Kylie would say to me, oh, how come I can't meet him? And I said, I just couldn't take you there unless mm. he asked me to bring you here. He's just not, he's such a private man. But um, yeah, it was, uh, it was very sad mm. when we lost him. But uh, I was, I look back at my career and I think I'm so lucky I had, uh, you know, the, the, I had the chance to work with such an icon mm. of Australian television. And he was a natural comedian, but it would have, would have been a fair bit of preparation in that too. So has that uh, helped you in radio, do you think? Or? Yes, it, it has. It, it, he taught me a couple of things. He really taught me to be real. He said, when you're on, or you, be, you, know, you start doing radio or whatever you're going to venture into, he's the one that pushed me into radio. Yeah, he said, I think you've got, uh, well, I suppose, the talent to, to be there. And that's when I chased that. And, and stop being a cameraman. But he taught me to be real because he said people will see through the, the sound of the microphone and they'll work out whether you're pulling their leg or not. He said people aren't that stupid. So I learned a lot. I learned a lot off it. Yeah, and the preparation side of it, I, I yeah, yeah, just learned a lot from, from the great man himself. I can tell I'm interviewing an interviewer because you're answering the questions before I ask them. The next question was, what prompted you to get in radio and when did that happen? I did that back in 19, about 1991, and I was at a dinner party with a, a, a guy called uh, Mike Hammond who was doing mm. breakfast radio on Today FM in Sydney. And on the midday show, I used to do a takeoff of John Michael Housen, the, the Hollywood reporter. And uh, I would, before he came out, and occasionally I'd go, hello, girls, because he spoke like that. Yeah. Hello, girls, what's going on? And um, Mike said, but, hey, would you do that on air for me? So I went in the next day, and did it on Today FM in his breakfast show. And then the program director there said, could you do that once a week? And that's when I started to get the love of radio and the me that medium. And I thought, oh, I'll have a crack at that. And at that stage, I mean, Graham had actually owned Today FM with Mike Willisey and, and John Laws, but Graham had sold his part. And then I started working for Today FM, and then that's where the, the, the story line goes for me. Yeah. So you came to Wollongong in 2002, what, what prompted you, because you were su successful in radio down there, what prompted you to come here? Oh, I, it, it, my dad was quite ill and we just had our two our kids, our Taylor was about nearly two and Jackson was just born. And I was on air with Erica, Erica Hodge, and er Erica and I would won the top award for best on air team in, in mm. our division. And nationally. Nationally, yeah, nationally, yeah, yeah. 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 And, um, the team from well, Win Radio, I98FM, uh, Phil Giblin, had uh, made a phone call and said, would you be interested in coming down here? And at first I went, nah, not really. We're pretty honest. My wife had a great job with the Canberra Raiders. Uh, she was their event director, mm. set up Super League. So we, had, you know, we both had very strong jobs and we had a nice little family, a nice street. It was, it was fantastic. So I had no plan to move. But then I started... It, put it in my head, okay, well, most of our family are back in Sydney, Kylie's mum and dad are in Sydney, why don't we make the move? Why not? We, nothing is holding us back in Canberra, mm. it's just really our job. So that's why we made the move and, and you know, that was back in 2002. And Kylie Ann had some connections here in the Illawarra? Kylie Ann's yeah. got cousins here, yeah, yeah she's okay. got an auntie that lives at, uh, well, she's now passed on, God bless her, but uh, Auntie Carol, as we knew her, Carol Haig, she lived, uh, she lived at uh, East Beach in Atunga uh, Avenue, and that's where I first we went. We lived for six months. We lived with her w when we first came here. Yeah. I get the feeling you'll never leave now that you're... Uh, yeah. I've got to love the place, so yeah. it really is. It's, it's a place, you know, I don't want to leave. I could, you know, when radio moves on and I go and do something else, well, I'll still live here. I love it. I love it. Now, we'll talk a little bit about Convoy because that's, uh, it's a juggernaut now. Can you just refresh our memories, like how much money has been raised here in the Illawarra over the years yeah. and how many trucks involved now on bikes? Greg, in, in 12 years, you, know, you look at the size of our community that we live, 300,000, we've raised nearly $10 million and that's <laughs> extraordinary. First had the mission to do it back in 2005. Well, it took us a couple of years. I'd sit at the top of Mount Oosley and I'd count trucks as they went past. I didn't tell anyone. Erica was the only one that, uh, that knew what my plan was. Then I went to I-98. I said, I've got a plan. And the plan is to do a truck convoy. And at first they went, are you serious? I said, 
it'll work. I think it'll work. And then I started to talk to a few people. I started to talk to a few of the coal truck drivers and, yeah, it's grown to what it is today. We, you know, we started off with 110 trucks, I think 101 motorbikes. Now we hit 750 plus trucks and 1,500 to 2,000 motorbikes. And I think everyone comes together on that, one, that third Sunday of November and they know why they're doing it. They're doing it to help a kid who's struggling and their families to say, hey, we're here, we're sharing the love, we want to help. Last question, what does the future hold for Marty Haynes? Uh, I'd like to retire in the next six months. No, <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I honestly don't know, Greg. I, yeah. I, I don't know, it just crossed my mind a bit. You know, I'm 52 this year, so I, I suppose I've got, I'm, I've got another 12 months on my contract, so I'll work it out within that 12 months. Whether I, I, I would still stay here in the Illawarra, but I, I don't know. I work for a great company. I mean, the Wynn organisation are absolutely fantastic. I cannot... For, they've been fantastic to me and my family, you know, and I pay them a, a lot in return for what they've done. You know, they've let me do convoy and, and that sort of stuff, and they've invested a lot of money into that. But that's not just the only thing, but just even support of me and my family as, as a whole. It's, it's, and, that's why, and that's why a lot of people, it's particularly in 998, have all stayed there for so long. The likes of Marge, Ryan mm. Cram, because we've, you know, they look after you. It's like a real family, you know, and we've yeah. got such a great team, a team there that... I don't know. I, I don't know. That, 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 it doesn't get any easier getting up at four every day, but you know, there's some great rewards out of it. It's well. a great town and region. Why wouldn't you, well, why exactly would you want right. to leave anyway? So true. And then we've got great facilities like this. So in saying goodbye and thanking you for coming on, I'm going to let you look at the camera over there and uh, you can sign off and say goodbye. You can do a Graham Kennedy or whatever you like. Oh, or John Michael. Uh, yeah, Hello, yeah. girls. <laughs> but uh, on behalf of Greg and myself uh, in the loop, we uh, thank you and hopefully you can listen to us on i in the Loop Wollongong is possible because of the support of our partners. So please show some love to our media partner, i98FM, playing them sick beats all day long. <laughs> our made possible by partners at Wollongong Central, discover the city. Do some retail therapy. Yes. The University of Wollongong, great place to learn. Lots of ducks. So much learning being done there. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> Advantage Wollongong, a superior business location. Destination Wollongong. We love the gum. Love it. Love it. Access Law Group, resolution is our solution. Kazen Business and Financial. Lancaster Law and Mediation. Illawarra Mercury. Internetrix. Relativity, Displace. Right here. <laughs> our promotional partners, who you can see here. And our kitchen partners. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time on In The Loop Wollongong. Bye.